Hey everyone, Brendan Bryan here. Welcome to a nice warm March 7th. The snow is finally starting to melt and the ice is slowly starting to melt as well, but it's very slippery out here. But I'm happy we're finally starting to get a uh, warm spell and maybe lose some of the snow. And I can actually get some more stuff done out here, but like I said in previous videos, I can only really do stuff in this area right where I'm standing. This area here is pretty much off limits. And that area there, I can get over there, but uh, it's not off limits because this area here, we have lawn. And I don't want to destroy the grass, even though it's pretty much destroyed anyways. But uh, yeah, that's not what this video is about. This video is about what I got from uh, Princess Auto. This stuff came in yesterday. This is a truck box. Uh, storage box, toolbox, whatever you want to call it. I couldn't beat the price on it. It was on sale for $35. That might have been the regular price. I'm not 100% sure. I ordered it, I ordered it online. Uh, the nearest Princess Auto is Ancaster, which is half hour drive. So it's no point driving there. Basically, the, the price to ship it was the same price, if not less, than what I'd spend in gas to get there. Probably less. So let me show you what's in here. A little bit of a surprise. As you can see, I've got a couple pulleys in here. This is my new pulley for the back of the 4x2. This here came with this. Uh, the little plastic plug this has four holes drilled in the bottom. But I guess if you don't want to use those holes, they can give you plastic plugs. Here is the weld on pulley, one of these pulleys. And here is my second one for the transaxle as well. So, you might be asking, well, what am I doing with the toolbox? Uh, first off, I wish I would have bought two of them for the price I got, got it for. And now seeing how big it is and how actually fairly well built it is. It's obviously made in China, but it's actually fairly well built and it's riveted on, but who cares? As long as you don't let it slam open, you'll be fine. It's got a fairly decent lock on it. My plans for this, when I put the rack on the back of the uh, GT6000, I'm going to put that on the rack. Maybe saying, oh, it's kind of pointless to put a rack on there with an ATV rack and just bolt that on there. No, I don't, I don't really think so. If I really have to take that off, I'll probably put uh, just some half inch bolts in it. Just quickly unbolt it. Basically, that's gonna allow me to carry around a set of jumper cables. I could actually put a second battery in there if I want. I gotta vent it though. Or it's probably fairly well vented anyways. As long as the battery's in a tie, in a tie down and uh, everything's protected, I could probably do a second battery in there. Because eventually, this is actually gonna be an off-roading tractor. Eventually. Once um, the plow breaks and a few other things, I'd like to move to uh, somewhere with more property before I make it an off-roading tractor considering it's useful right now. Uh, it's very, very useful. And when and if we ever do move to more property, I'll probably end up putting a plow on the uh, 4x2 here. Uh, it would actually, I think, do fairly well plowing, but uh, as of right now, it won't because it's tight tight uh, place I'm at and uh, I can't really get through the gate very well. Also, with the 4x2, I've made a decision on it. The very back axle is going to be locked, so I'm going to put the, the locked axle, most likely from the Kubota, in the very back of this, and then the uh, middle transaxle will be unlocked. So I could either do one of two things. I could either just swap out that axle there with this axle here, but uh, that one is a uh, peerless, and I'm not 100% sure what these ones are. Also, the front one in this is kind of a crappy tranny anyways. So I'm still getting that other tractor. I'm hoping it has a five or six speed in it. It's a Murray, so it should have a five or six speed in it. Probably peerless. That's what I'm hoping on is a, is a six speed peerless. So it hopefully will match that one right there. And that one there will just swap straight into the back. And then the one from the other tractor will swap into the middle. This tire, tractor I'm getting comes with tire chains. So the very back will have tire chains on it. I'll probably have an extra set of tires to swap out the tires in the in the spring so I don't run chains. I think that will actually be the best idea. Someone also made, an, made a suggestion to me. 
try to have the very back one selectable four wheel drive. I'd like to do that. I have ideas on how to do that. I believe I mentioned in previous videos how I could do that, but uh, I'm probably just gonna hook it up straight and uh, use it. So anyways, I was thinking here, I believe I already have a uh, four inch on the back of this. So if so, I, only have, I won't have to drop this transmission to uh, replace the pulley. I picked up some new uh, Woodruff keys and uh, the seat clips for the top. Hopefully the seat clips will work. Um, when I went to the parts store, they said I they got the right Woodruff keys, but the uh, seat clips are a little bit thicker. Hopefully I can make them work. But um, this is my uh, pulley I had on here previously. I believe that's an eight inch. There is a four inch right there on the bottom. So I believe that's a, uh, that, that could even be a nine inch. I'm not sure because it looks, looks more than double that uh, middle pulley there. So that's a four inch right there. So I'm thinking I did end up putting a four inch on the back here. So if so, I got an extra four inch pulley with a uh, three eighths shaft. I believe that's what they are offhand. So with, with that, that's actually not gonna be too bad. It will work out. Uh, it's always good to have a few extra pulleys around. So my, my game, uh, sorry, my game plan with this tractor, once the pulley swap is done, to only run it in probably about third gear, third or fourth gear. So I don't have to use sixth gear all the time, which would be nice. And also, I, instead of running at a high idle, I want to run at a uh, medium idle and still go twice, if not three times faster than I'm already going. So I'm being dripped on by, I think these boards right here. So I'm gonna back up a bit. So that's my game plan with the uh, with the swap to uh, basically save on fuel by technically going faster but using a lower idle. So that's that's my idea. Also, this video is just basically a random update and what I've been up to. I believe I mentioned this. Got a new idea for this. This is where the stock gas tank was. That's getting cut off. That's where the uh, controls are. That's being cut off and saved. So I'm going to mount the uh, control center back in there once it's all done and rewired. And up here, where the uh, gas tank will be going, that's still going to be my trailer hitch where the uh, tongue is on this. But I'm going to narrow this frame. I'm going to cut each side off, uh, cut it down, and make it all the same uh, width. Which I think will actually work out a little bit better. And... Um, should I, it won't look funny at the front end having the front end wider than the back so also oh, see like i said still very slippery out here these tires here are the uh stock tires off the kubota yeah i got them off um it was a bugger to get them off i actually had to cut the axles and then uh pound them out and the one was seized up so bad i had to use heat and a bunch of other stuff to get it out and i forget if i mentioned it or not but uh like I said, random update. Kubota, currently out of service. I had to steal the Woodruff key out of it so I could get to work on Thursday with the Kubota. If you haven't figured out, it is Friday. This video will be uploaded today. Uh, I didn't have to go to work today, luckily. Uh, went out and got some other stuff done. I was called in, but I said, no, I, ca I can't make it. So that's uh, pretty much it for this video. I'm going to... Uh, do my pulley swap. I'm hoping I can pulley swap just the first transmission. Then with the second one, I'm going to uh, just take the uh, keys out of the tires and uh, until I can get the get the, get the middle pulley welded up. I'm not going to use my welder. Uh, let's get my stepdad to weld it up at work, and uh, it'll be good to go. Um, my front pulley's in the shop. I got the belt, so I haven't even test fitted the uh, new pulleys yet. I know they'll fit the. Uh, I know they'll fit the transmission. I, I tested that. But I didn't have a chance last night to test the belt. So I'm, I believe everything is going to work out fine. And one more if you're still hanging into this video. I had a weird thing happen. I was driving this at work yesterday. I hit a big snowbank. A pretty big snowbank. I, I slowed down just in time. But it ended up throwing the belt. So I just quickly put the belt back on. Because there's traffic behind me. And I, I had to get moving again. Um, turns out I put the belt on upside down. It actually made reverse forward, forward reverse. <laughs> kind of stupid how it did it, because I reversed the belt, but put it back the right way, it all worked fine. It's interesting how that worked. Um, I always thought it would still spin the correct way. I guess when I reversed the belt, it made the it reversed the motion of the transmission. 
I'm pretty sure that's a, that's what ha that's what happens. So that's uh pretty much it. So let's go up here if I can make it through. Snow this ice is starting to melt, which is nice. Shania and Emily are up here. Shania is being a stinker. No? As you can see, she has a backpack on. I'm calling her a little hot dog now. So she looks like a hot dog and bun. So that's uh, pretty much it. So I'll talk to everyone later. Please keep it redneck like always, and uh, please subscribe and comment.